um, a very special assembly, and you may have noticed this assembly is going to be filmed, and that's because it's a really special day in the history of the college. Today is the college's 152nd um, birthday, so it's 152 years old today. And Mrs. Scarrett, if you haven't met Mrs. Scarrett, she is our amazing librarian who's worked at the college for a long time, and she's also responsible for archiving all the things to do with the history of the college. Um, and she's going to talk to you today about today, which is called Founders Day. Mm -hmm. And I'll just hand over to her. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's very nice to see all of you in on mass. I haven't really been introduced to more than a few of you for short story club and things like that. So um, it's it's very nice to meet the whole lot of you together. I, I met you in one trench of girls and one trench of boys. But um, as as uh, as uh, Bush just said, it's Founders Day today. The school was founded 152 years ago because. In those days, if you belonged to the Church of England, life was dandy. And you could organise yourself and do this, that and the other. But should you be so shockingly aberrant as to want to do something like be Roman Catholic or a Protestant of the United Reformed Church or the Baptist, the Church of England went out of its way to make life difficult for you and they wouldn't let you get married or be buried or do anything like that without giving you special permission or making you do it in their church instead of your church. Well, the nonconformists who lived around here got fed up with that, and they decided that they would found a school specially for them. Um, there wasn't a school in Bishop Stortford at the time. There had been one 100 years ago, but it had pitted away to nothing. And so the local vicar, the Reverend Hernstall, who was in Water Lane, the church down by Waitrose, decided to get a committee together and see if they could organise a local school. Now, he was very kind and he went to the, um, to the local vicar, the Reverend Rhodes, and said, would you be interested in founding an ecumenical school, that is, one for all the religions? And Reverend and, and the Reverend Rhodes went, mm, uh, let me think about that, no. <laughs> and so the nonconformists decided to go it alone. They did some searching, looking around and about, and they found that down by the Waitrose car park was a little tiny school called the Nonconformist Collegiate School, and they decided that they'd buy it. And then, gradually, this land came free, and there was another school here, and they bought that land and moved up here in the 1850s and in the 1868 they formally got together and they now founded the non-conformist grammar school and i'm going to talk very quickly about the history since then so here's a few before and after photographs can you see what uh, that building turned into have you been in the uh, FLT? I'm sure you have for the Literature Festival and things like that. It used to be a swimming pool. Here's the next building. That is the sanatorium, or the place where you went when you were ill. So, anybody recognise where that is? Well, of course, it's, Be it's Benson House now and Sutton House. They share it. Um, here's another bit of building range that you might recognise. The, uh, the, the building... Up at that end has long gone, that was the chemistry block. But the, roof, the building with the, with the line of windows in the roof, that was the swimming pool. And there you've got the history block, and there you've got schoolhouse. What's missing? The mem hall. How, how about this one? Here is the cloisters building. It was called the cloisters because cloisters originally go round all four sides of a square, but this one did not go round all five, four sides of a square. They built it as they could afford to build it. So at the moment, we've only got half the cloisters, but they, are, they do have a covered walkway and they do have, have the, the classrooms above and below, as you're supposed to have in a cloister. So here's the original building from 1852. And you can see that some of it is still recognisable. So we've got a couple of doors in there that are still existent and a few windows that are, are still existent. 
the school started with about 40, um, with, with about 40 pupils, and as it got bigger and got bigger, it had to be expanded. So they built the new schoolhouse on the side and added to the original building. And the committee appointed for its first headmaster the Reverend Elliot, who was a, uh, a, 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 a vicar from Cheshire. He, he, he lived up, up, up in the north. And he came down with his family and started the school. They bought the land here on the other side of Mays Green Road at the same time because it was going cheap, because, I don't know if you know, but the headmaster's garden has a pond in the end of it. And before they did all the, that drainage works and things like that, it used to flood quite regularly, so the land was going cheap. And then they bought a bit more land, slightly further up at Mays Green Road. Um, Mays Green Road wasn't the original name of this road. This road used to be called Pest House Lane, because up at the top of the hill was the Pest House, which is where you sent somebody who'd got a contagious disease. So it wasn't, wasn't very highly thought of. They thought the land around it might be contaminated, so that's where they built Robert Pierce House. Here's the school uniform from the, from the 1890s. Can you see that the boys have got fi funny little forage caps like, like um, American soldiers. No peaks on them, not much in the way of uniform, and they come in their ordinary, ordinary suits, um, which of course are knee-high with socks and, uh, socks and stockings. And there's a class there as well. Of course, they are all boys, only boys. Boys were educated uh, here, and you got, a, you got a reduction in the fees if you were a non-conformist vicar who had sent your, your, children, your sons here. Now here's the staff, grand total of them. There's a matron, there's the gentleman with the wonderful beard in, in, in the middle is the geography teacher. Re the Reverend Elliot is on the left-hand side sitting down and uh, he, his, his lady wife is there. And, the la lady in the spotty dress at the, at the far right is the matron, so she would have looked after the sanatorium and the boarding arrangements. In 1899, the Reverend Elliot died in harness, if you know what that means. It means he, he, he died while he was still working. He hadn't retired. He'd done 30 years as a headmaster, but he'd, he'd, um, he'd, he'd fallen ill and he, he was buried in the end in the, cha in the graveyard at the top of the hill. And they had, um, they had, during his time, built quite a few amazing buildings, like um, an indoor swimming pool, quite unusual for, the, for a, a, place, a place like this, one of the first ones in the country, and an athletics track, and they had the, the various um, te teaching staff and some schools. Now, in 1900, they had to get another headmaster, so who applied for the job? It was an ex-pupil. So he'd been, been taught here by the Reverend Allier and he decided to come back as headmaster and his name was Francis Young. And he decided that at the time there was a school on Haddon Road called the, called the Bishop's Law for Grammar School and this one down the, down the hill called the, called the uh, Bishop's Law for Collegiate School which seemed pretty weird. So they changed the name and this one became the college. And that he set up a new governing council with a gentleman by the name of Mr. Grimwade. Another name you might know? Now, they, they decided to expand. They bought some, um, a building down by, uh, down by the Chantry, where Newbury Close is now. That was where Newbury House was. And that was the first prep school, 1902. And now, here's that range of buildings with no memorial hall. You've got no, nowhere to go for chapel or anything like that. Morning, morning prayers were said in the schoolhouse. But on a Sunday morning, everybody lined up and they walked all the way to the Water Lane Church for morning service. And then in the evening, on Sunday, they lined up and they went there all over again. <laughs> here's a class in what's now the history block. Can you see the old-fashioned desks? Uh, which was sort of built in one piece to stop me fidgeting and scraping the chairs about. We've got one of those still upstairs in the archives. So if you can come sometime and visit us, you will see it upstairs. 
Now, the families were big in those days. So here's Mr. Stevenson in the wonderful stripy top and cap, flat cap, playing goalkeeper. And all, the, all his boys were fielded up for a tenor-side football match against Bishop Stortford College. So he's got all, all the boys there. Um, and a few years later, we had an entire um, water polo team made out of collets. Okay, so all the Collett family boys were in, were in a water polo team together and they played the school as well. Here's Grimwade House. It was designed by an architect who was an ex-pupil and it was opened in 1912. And, and sorry, built in 1912 and opened in 1913. 1912 was a very odd year in the school because a, new, a boy who just moved into Grimwade in his first few days developed typhoid, which was an awful illness, and he died of it. So that was a very, very sad start to Grimwade, but they seem to have recovered since. Also in 1912, one old Stortfordian went down in the Titanic. Then a worse year came across, of course, because the World War I started, and things changed. The school had never had a cadet corps before, but they got one now. They started it up as, as, as the need arose. There were troops billeted in the, in the buildings down, down here. They were in the swimming pool, they were in the, in the, in the outbuildings and all over the place. Um, the headmaster and the bursar couldn't get coal for love nor money. It must have been freezing in the dormitories. In the end, 600 pupils and staff served, in the, served as troops or uh, pilots or, or whatever, and an awful lot of them were 18-year-olds. The memorial hall, which you're in now, was inscribed with the names of the dead on, on the, beside the door. And the doors, which have got the pelicans in gold on, on them, were dedicated to a teacher. He was the only teacher who went to war but didn't come back again, and, and um, he, his name was Mr Knight. And down at the end, uh, you will see Mr Knight's picture on, on the wall there with, his, with his, uh, his, his citation, and what's called a dead man's penny, which is a bronze plaque saying that you fought for your king and country and died. And his fam family very kindly gave, us to the, uh, gave that to us a couple of years ago. Now, Mr Young retired and he became a Church of England vicar. So he, he had cro crossed the pond, if you like, for, for, uh, for, for, for the matters of faith. And um, it's, um, his, his name was Leo Price. We've got the Leo Price Theatre built across the way, that, which is dedicated to his memory. Um, it didn't start life as a theatre, it started life as a gymnasium where you did sports and PE and stuff like that. Because Mr Price was an avid sports fan. He, He'd, play, he'd played hockey and football for England or, or for the, the, the university teams quite several times, so he was quite well known as a, a sportsman. Um, and uh, be, be, the, lay, the mums were very fond of him, they thought he was a bit of a dish. Um, but he was, busy courting, um, he was busy courting a teacher from the Hearts and Essex High School. But in those days, if you were a married lady and a teacher, you had to give up your job. And she'd said, no, I don't think so. I like my girls. I'm going to stay here. So he, she, she wouldn't marry him, which was possibly a good idea because the stress of looking after a school in World War time was too much for him. And he, he went into um, surgery for ulcers and he didn't come back. He, he, was, um, he, he died in the hospital, which is a, a shock. So the school suddenly had to find yet another headmaster. Like some buildings go, going on at the time. Here's the, uh, here, here's the new fields, which we, we bought uh, over at the top of the, the field. And um, the Doggart Pavilion, which was built in the 30s. The, cricket, the fields were so lumpy that the goalkeepers couldn't see each other at the beginning of, of when, the, when the land was bought. And here's a 1930s dormitory. None of your one or two people in a bedroom. This was um, Spartan. There, there were two, two dorms in, in the schoolhouse. This is the upper one, because you can tell from the rafters. And they were A dorm and B dorm. And here's how you did fire drill. 
This was chutes out of the window, made out of canvas, so you had to go down barefoot. So you climbed out through the window and slid down. One boy did not go barefoot, ripped a hole through with the heels of his boots and fell to the ground. Broken leg was the least of it, I think. Uh, nowadays, of course, you're all much safer. And here's the library block in 1936 being built in stages. The first bit to be built was Elm 9 and then the, the bit in front of that, and then the middle, and then the other side, and the tops of the, of the um, two wings didn't go on to, right up until to the 1960s. Here's a building you will recognise, but it's slightly different because it's got a raised dais in the middle for the staff to supervise and see what's going on. You wouldn't fit all the staff on there nowadays, would you? <laughs> And in 1968, the school celebrated its 100th birthday. Because it was special, a very special royal visitor came. This is the Queen Mum. Yeah, I'm sure you... Do you know who the Queen Mum was? Yeah. Anyway, she landed by helicopter just out there and came and visited for the day. Oh, go back one. The uh, gentleman who's showing her around is the, head, is the next headmaster, and that is Mr. Rowe. And guess where he went to school? Here, yes. <laughs> so this is several head, headmasters here have, have been to school here. 1978, things move on. The school catches up with the times, and the first girls arrive. Um, the first girls had arrived a year earlier because the... Um, there was a, a school up on the Haddam, Haddam Road which had gone, gone broke and they had half a dozen girls in the sixth form who urgently needed somewhere to stay while they did their A-levels. So they moved into Haywood House. So the, and there's a very early picture of Haywood House with half a dozen girls in it, which is uh, quite unusual. So Mr Greetham was the new headmaster and he welcomed the first girls into the sixth form and there were six boarders and nine day girls. And there's Mr. Kisby in the middle, who is the house master, which is the only odd thing about that entire arrangement. In the 90s, we are finally co-educational. It started in the prep school and has come all the way through, so now it's, it's boys and girls equally, with tinies in the pre-prep, all the way through to uh, uh, 18. And here's the technology block, here's our new swimming pool and in 2000 we finally built a nice new prep school and a swimming pool. Coming rapidly up to date, here's Elliot House which used to be called Winch Cottage and was the staff room and was seriously overcrowded and, and messy and we've, uh, we moved out, let the girls move in and take it over and tidy it up and keep it much nicer than we ever did. <laughs> and, um, and Trotman House was built, newly built in 2017. 2018 was our 150th birthday and to celebrate we had lots of events going on. I'm sure some of you came to some of those, didn't you? Um, but the main event that I got involved in was the time capsule. So there is a huge big time capsule. It's about that big, by that big, by that big. Big fish, cardboard box here. <laughs> um, it's, it's a big time capsule and to find space for it, it's in the flower beds, raised flower beds, by Master, on Masters Green. And there's a brick column on top to mark the spots. So when you come back in 50 years time for it to be dug up, you know where it is. What did we put in it? We put in it everyday things like the publications, the school magazines, the uh, newspapers, the flyers, the literature festival program. We put in badges, we put in bits of uniform, we put in samples of schoolwork from the prep school who were writing down what they had for lunch and a beautiful quilted um, uh, piece which, which was made by the CDT department and it's got all the school colours, ties and bit, bits of uniform. There was artwork in there, poems, photo albums, all sorts of things. 
And here's the, the assistant bursar in the library with the candle wax. Sounds like, sounds like an episode of Cluedo, doesn't it? Sealing up the box before we, we put on the lid and, and, and closed it up. And then we took it to the brick-lined brick chamber on Masters Green, and it, it's to stay there for 50 years. So, 50 years from now, at Bishop Stortford College, I'm sure you will still be around. I, 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 I'm glad, glad to say I will not be. Will the, uh, will the buildings be the same? Are you going to stay in touch with the, with the Bishop Stortford College Alumni Association, the old Stortfordians, and each other? Will there be a uniform? <laughs> what about house music? Oh, you're going to miss a treat this year. I am so sorry about that, because it's one of the highlights of the year. But um, I'm, I'm sure that you, you will see it again before, before it, it comes out. But what will house music be like? And how many of you will have joined the staff? Quite a, quite a few members of staff here are, are old Stortfordians. Um, how, how many of you will come back as teachers, come back as workers, come back... Um, um, to visit as parents and bring your children here. It says a lot, of, a lot about a place that they do, that so many teachers come back. You, how old will you be? Well, you'll be nearly as old as me, and I'm about to retire. Good luck with that. <laughs> and will you be back for the 200th birthday? I would like to think so very much indeed. Have very many happy returns of the day. Happy Founders Day. <laughs>